Hi, I'm Sandali. I'm a policy reporter at Coindesk. And as you might know already, we are in Davos this week. And joining us today, we have His Excellency Omar Al Olama, who is the Minister of State for Artificial Intelligence in the United Arab Emirates. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, how are you finding Davos this year? You've been here before. There's quite a few panels on artificial intelligence. It's a big presence of crypto all over the place. Uh, what do you think? What, what are your impressions? So I prefer Davos without the snow. Oh. I know it might be controversial, <laughs> but I, I love it this time of year. Mm -hmm. I think the conversations are very exciting. Also seeing the migration, honestly, from crypto being a taboo su subject a few years back to now uh, certain governments and, and certain other players embracing at least some of the positive implications of crypto and some of the ways that the crypto can, can be used. I think blockchain more generally is becoming a lot more popular, which is good for everyone because you can build a trust-based society, you can actually uh, create systems that are more secure and s systems that can take us to Web 3.2 and beyond. Mm -hmm. And it's quite unique to have a ministry focused on artificial intelligence and blockchain initiatives in, in any country. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the role of the ministry and sure. kind of your goals for, for UAE in particular? So uh, I'm the Minister of Artificial Intelligence, Digital Economy and Remote Work Applications. The three actually go hand in hand in one way, shape or form or, or the other. The interesting thing is we hear a lot of governments and we hear a lot of government leaders talk about the importance of artificial intelligence and why it's important to lead the future. But the interesting fact is no one's actually doing anything about it. So we're just hearing people talk. The UAE actually wants to take a, a more proactive role. It wants to regulate negative AI, optimize positive AI and deploy it. Also look at how we can create the enabling environment for artificial intelligence startups to be launched out of the UAE. There are certain key advantages that the UAE have, has. The first is we have, if you look at General artificial intelligence systems, one of the biggest problems that we have, and I'm not talking about AGI, I'm just talking about in general, is bias. Mm -hmm. And that is because the local population or the people on the ground, uh, the demographics are, you know, leaning in one way or the other. So, for example, there's more Caucasian males, there's more Asians, or there's more Africans, and so on and so forth. What makes the UAE special is that we have 200 nationalities in uh, you know, one of the most cutting edge infrastructures in the world. So you have the velocity of data, you have the variety of data, and you have the volume of data in certain sectors. Mm -hmm. So logistics, oil and gas, tourism, and others, the UAE and finance, for example, the UAE today is a leader, and the volume of data is unlike any other. So you can create a global first AI company from the UAE from, from you know, just uh, launching there today. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of digital economy, we understand that the digital economy is going to be enabled by AI, but mm -hmm. there are other facets that are going to be included there. Blockchain is one of them. Mm -hmm. So I also try to oversee what our strategy is on this front, how we can deploy, how can we actually protect our ultimate stakeholder, which is the citizen, mm -hmm. all right? And how can we also make sure that he's informed, that he is able to leverage on these new opportunities that are coming up? Amazing. And um, let's talk a little bit also about uh, the blockchain and crypto side of things. Uh, the UAE recently introduced a licensing framework for crypto and um, there's, there's maybe some ambitions to become a crypto hub in the region. Um, how does that fit into to all of this? So, so the good news is I don't think it's ambitions anymore. We, we are already a crypto hub for the region, one of the crypto hubs of the world. Look, um, ultimately, you know, we need to do what the people want. Mm. right? And for some reason, uh, there are many other explanations for why this is, people have chosen to embark in the crypto journey, right? And that is people putting their life saving, people putting you know, their investments, and you would expect that they did some sort of due diligence because it's a high risk industry today. It will mature over time, it's quite premature today, it's quite nascent, but at one point of time, it's going to mature. What should the government do? Take a back seat and mm -hmm. wait for this to either go wrong or go right? or at least come and say, look, there are certain fundamentals that we need to ensure. We need to ensure that there's no money laundering. We need to ensure that, that we understand who is trading and who's working on this. We need to ensure that this is not a pump and dump scheme, that this is actually a legit business model that's built on legit terms. Being a you know, nascent industry, there are going to be mistakes. We need to minimize the shock on our people. We need to also ensure that they are as informed as possible to the risks because then they can take their decision of what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And you want to also make sure that there's no illegal activity happening within the sphere. This is why we moved forward, because if we want to protect our people, if we want to ensure that 
you know, as a government, we're doing our role correct uh, or rightly, we should do it this way. There's another aspect to it as well. Crypto talent is amongst the best globally. The, they are building Web 3.0, they are working on securing different things and different uh, platforms and, and infrastructure, digital infrastructure. So I think the, the war today or the strategy should not be on the industry as a whole specifically, it should be on talent uh, more directly. We should try to be the talent hub. And crypto talent tomorrow can become talent that will build the metaverse, talent that's going to build payment gateways, talent that's going to build the new fintech startups, and that's how we see it. We want to attract this talent, we want to enable them, and we want to create the right environment. Very quickly, we've seen that the UAE today has attracted a lot of people working in this space. Some of them are quite big, like Polygon, for example, and mm -hmm. Binance. Others are quite new and small, but if you get regulated, there is some checks and balances done on that startup, so people have more trust towards it. How do you then make sure you mentioned innovation you said we have to educate people about the risks um and a big part of this has to do with regulation and you know we see your neighbor the eu taking kind of a heavy-handed approach so far to uh, regulating artificial intelligence and um, crypto so what what is your approach how do you ensure that innovation and adoption keeps you know going up but at the same time it protects people in the right way so, so first we think about the baseline. Mm. The baseline is, is there any criminal activity? Is there anything that will harm people? Even in AI, by the way, some black box scenarios can actually harm people by not giving them the service or you know, uh, having bias against a specific individual and then giving him a specific service that's not tailored to them, uh, whether male or female or whatever their ethnicity is. So we need to look at what the baseline is to actually provide the service or the good or, or you know, the experience that people want in this new domain. And the baseline is, is there a crime being committed? Is there potential for harm? If there is, we need to be very agile and nimble in changing legislation and regulation. Uh, how we see it, there are two types of regulators globally, and I'm not going to name any, uh, but uh, I'm going to say is there are regulators that think everyone's guilty until proven innocent. So they're very stringent. They really focus on making sure that no one gets through unless they can take every single box. And that is an approach that works for some. And there are reg regulators that say, that say everyone's innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. But to prove you're innocent, you know, we need to make sure that there's proper KYC. Mm -hmm. We need to ensure that you are doing the right checks and balances to, to at least be able to answer to any problem that happens. We take the latter approach. We believe everyone's innocent until proven guilty. We also believe that this technology to some degree has merit. So we should not shun it or we should not close the door on it. And we need to work with the industry to try to understand what does maturity mean and how we can play a role in that. Right. And so it, it sounds like you have a lot of interesting points to make and strong points. And you are in Congress. You are talking to the people that that need to know about these, the, these things and need to start that discussion. Um, so what are you looking most forward to for the rest of the, the conference? Well, I'm looking to see what happens when the metaverse converges with blockchain, converges with AI, and how would that look? Mm -hmm. We hear about them specifically in their own verticals. We hear very little about them interconnecting mm -hmm. and how the world is going to change. So I do hope to uh, be a part of that conversation. I do hope to get a lot out of this and take it back home and then launch the right policies, programs, and strategies for that. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you.